Hey, good morning, everybody. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about population, population growth. Um, and when we talk about populations, we have to kind of define the realm of, of biology that, that studies this, which is demography. Um, it's the statistical study of populations, predicts how the size of population will change over time. All right. And there's a few key, uh, key aspects to, to population growth we'll talk about today. Okay, so when we talk about populations, we, we can talk about it a number of different ways. We can talk about populations in terms of geographic range, right? That's how far a population stretches in terms of going further north or further south, right? Is a population widespread or is it very is it very dense and compact? Um, we can talk about density and distribution. So density is just the amount of organisms per given area. Distribution is how those organisms are arranged in that area, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, we can talk about growth rate. That's obviously kind of population growth, right? So which we can graph that looking at growth rate. But we also talk about age structure. Age structure is, you know, what percentage of the population are zero to two years old? What percentage of the population are three to four years old? What percent of the population are five or six and so forth? That's kind of like the age structure of, of a population. Um, so geographic range, which we kind of mentioned already, it's just the range um, of that population, like how far it spreads over in a given area. Um, and depending on the species, right, th this can, you know, range enormously. Some species have very, very large geographic ranges. Some species have a very small. Right? If you think about an organism that's, that is a unique organism on one given island in somewhere in the tropics, that geographic range is going to be very small. Um, compared to other organisms can be widespread throughout, you know, almost uh, large regions of, of North America. Um, this one here is looking at a certain type of um, aquatic plant known as a hydrilla. And you kind of see how the, the geographic range has changed over time from the 1950s, 1960s, 1970s, 1980s, 1990s, right? You can see how much that, that, that um, this aquatic plant has spread over time. Um, so when we talk about this, we, we talk about density. Density is easy. Obviously, we know density is the amount of organisms in a given area, but we these organisms are dynamic. So they don't just always, you know, follow um reach equilibrium or follow like diffusion patterns like there there sometimes there's a lot of of interaction social interaction between organisms so therefore they group or they clump differently um so density is just the amount of organisms in a given area distribution is how these organisms are spaced or how they're arranged um, and that's what we're going to go into next there's kind of three major types of of distribution there's there's clumped distribution see how they're kind of clumped together here there's a uniform distribution, and then there's this random distribution. So there's kind of three major ways that, that populations can be distributed. So again, we have this random, just all over the place, doesn't really matter. Some are close together, some are far apart. There's really no rhyme or reason to it. There's this uniform where organisms are trying to maintain like some uniform distance between each other. And then there's this clumped. All right. So when we talk about examples of this, right, you can talk about clumped first. So you can think of organisms that are social or organisms that are herding animals. So you can think of like um, troops of, of chimpanzees, right? So they're grouped together with a social hierarchy. They're clumped in their own groups. Dolphins tend to group together. Wolves tend to go in packs. Cattle, bison, herd animals. Schools of certain types of fish. You can kind of see like a ball of fish swimming in all different, uh, they're kind of swimming in uniform in different directions. Um, all of these are kind of examples of clumped uh, distribution. Uniform distribution, trees in a nursery is a good one. That's a little, you know, um, I guess fabricated because it's not really in nature, right? We're doing it. Um, but you think of organisms that try to maintain um, a certain spacing. So have you ever seen like March of the Penguins, right? It looks like penguins are clumped because they're very, very close together. Um, but when penguins kind of march in, lay their eggs and they're protecting their eggs, they actually maintain a very, very specific distance from each other. Even though they're grouped together, they're maintaining a space around themselves and their egg, trying to protect that egg from other penguins. So although there's this big group together, there's this uniformity within that group that gives them kind of this uniform um, distribution. Uh, another example of this kind of think of other birds or some birds if you think of birds nesting on a cliff where the whole you know flock of birds all nesting on a cliff there's going to be some uniformity between where those nests are located and trying to keep um, spacing between them so there's kind of this uniform distribution 
Uh, other examples of uniform distribution is really think of territoriality, right? Organisms that try to maintain their own territory tend to have more of a uniform distribution. So jaguars can be an example of this, right? A jaguar in the forest, they're kind of solitary organisms. It might look random at first, but jaguars kind of have their own territory. And you think of jaguars or, you know, um, certain organisms marking their territory, right, to kind of tell other organisms, hey, this is my space. So territorial organisms also can kind of maintain this, this uniform distribution. Um, and the last one's random. Random is just organisms don't care whether they're evenly spaced or not evenly spaced. So just think of dandelions, how they grow in your lawn. Like they're kind of growing all over the place. Depends on wherever the seed lands, that's where they grow. All right, that is the lesson for the start of, of populations. The next thing we're going to go into is, is growth rate and growth structure, which will be the next video. So thank you very much.